Konnichiwa, Japan fans. In today's show, we're going to talk about buyer woes. Za ego des. Sore dewa ikimasho. So let's get going. This is the seventh year of the Sales Japan series podcast, broadcasting around the world from the Beverly Hills of Japan. Minatoku here in downtown Tokyo. It is chic central. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Kanii, Tokyo franchise owner, the president of Dale Kanii Tokyo Training, and the three-time best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery, plus Stop Wasting Money on Training in Japanese, Training there. And all are available on Amazon. In this podcast, I want to help you to survive and, even better, thrive in business. One, sell more and do it more easily. Two, exceed your targets. In fact, blow up your targets. Three, make some serious, serious money. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn. But we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Libsyn have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on Apple Podcasts. Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show podcast. Tuesday, the Presentations Japan series. And every second Tuesday, the Business Touches in No Oshie Show. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan series. And every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast Show. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show podcast. Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. Now, this is episode number 350. And today we are talking about buyers have many woes, and we need those in sales. There's nothing worse. The meeting a buyer with no problems. Theoretically, we shouldn't be meeting with them at all because we should have qualified them first. After three years of COVID forcing us all on video, getting to meet a buyer face to face is a genuine thrill for salespeople. We are likely to meet every single buyer we can get in front of. There's also the point that a buyer may think they are all good and have no issues, but perhaps we can help them see that is not the case. The simplest illustration of that is the buyer thinks taking no action is free. It isn't free, for there is always a price to pay for inaction. Our job as salespeople is to point that fact out to the client. Unprofessional salespeople in Japan get straight into the detail of their solution for the buyer and just bypass the questioning bit. How do they know if their solution fits the needs of the buyer? And even worse, how do they convince the buyer who believes they already have enough solutions that that isn't the case? If the buyer thinks they are self-sufficient or are already well taken care of by another supplier, then getting the business is going to be extremely difficult. The only way to break through that wall of non-interest is to use questions to plant the seeds of doubt in their mind. Just repeating the sales points of the solution won't go anywhere because mentally they have dismissed us as irrelevant. All they are doing is thinking, how can they shorten this meeting and get into something more beneficial with their time? Salespeople are talking to a lot of buyers and hear a lot of information about trends in the industry and about issues relevant now and also about issues which will surface soon. Buyers are often stuck inside the group think of their own companies. There is a single truth being observed internally, and this can make them impervious to our solution. Our job is to shake up that belief in a single truth and point out how dangerous that idea is in a fluid and complex business world. Let me give an example. Many companies are actively working on diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, 
for their companies. The belief is that they can tap into great innovation by involving women and younger people more in coming up with the ideas. In traditional companies, these two groups are excluded because older men dominate the direction of the firm and they distill the single truth which everyone must follow. Talking to some clients who were early movers in the DEI arena, I found they'd done a good job of the why component of DEI, but they hadn't been able to get to any meaningful diversity stage. Therefore, the premise of gaining greater innovation wasn't working, despite all the time and effort put into the DEI campaigns. I realized they hadn't progressed from the why to the how. Knowing this, when I speak with potential clients about DEI, I don't go into any detail about how it works or what is in the specific modules, etc. I ask questions which inflame their thinking, strike fear deep into their hearts and scare the hell out of them. Find out more. We come back from the break. Our show today is brought to you by our public courses, but we also do custom in-house programs as well as we do them in both Japanese and English. We do them face-to-face in our super safe classroom and we do them live online. Today's show is being brought to you by, on the 19th of July, we're doing a one-day program on time management. On the 20th of July, we'll be looking at excellence in presentations. On the 22nd of July, we're doing our flagship Dale Cunningham course. And on the 26th of July, we'll be doing Secrets of Human Relations. Go to our website at www.com dale d-a-l-e hyphen carnegie c-a-r-n-e-g-i-e dot c-o dot j-p get my best-selling books japan sales mastery which in japanese is zaegyo this is the bible for selling in japan japan business mastery japan presentations mastery plus stop wasting money on training which in japanese is training there okane wa muru ni sune wa yami masho and all are available on amazon if you like learning by watching videos, we have nearly 2,000 there for you at Tokyo Japan Dalkani TV on YouTube. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's the premier business show on Japan every Monday, Tokyo time. Fridays, we have the Japan Business Mastery Show. And on Sundays, we release Japan's top business interviews. Where I interview leaders from small and medium enterprises all the way up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic leading in japan every second thursday we release the business pro telebi show you can email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com welcome back remember they have come up with their own solutions or they're using my competitors solutions So I have to blow all of that up with questions which challenge the accepted truths. For example, I would ask, change fatigue is a real thing inside companies and accelerates when the benefits of the changes are not being seen by the team. Given you've been working in DI for some time now, are you seeing concrete changes around innovation inside the company? The buyer has to nominate the benefits of the DEI program and prove that it is working. If they cannot, then I need to push harder and say, could it be that you're very close to a breakthrough, but the missing piece is something beyond just explaining the why of DEI? I don't volunteer the how part of the solution because I want them to tell me that rather than it comes from my side. If they say it, then it is true. If I say it, I'm a salesman, and they may not believe it. If they supply the answer I want and say they haven't been able to move from the why to the execution piece needed to get the changes leading to innovation, then I just ask them why that is, and then shut up. I'm drawing them into my web through questions which are designed to destroy their belief and what they are doing, and force them to open their minds up to my solution. It's a hard thing for people to admit they are failing or that they've made the wrong decision to use my competitor. 
Because of this, the answers must come from them, and I cannot be proffering the solution. If I say, well, what you need is to do more work around the how piece, unfortunately we have five out of eight of our modules which specifically address that how piece, I will run straight into a wall of negativity to that statement, as they feel they have to defend what they are doing now and not admit the actual situation. I need to be asking questions which push them to internally admit they need the how piece and uh, to ask me if we have it. The temptation is to jump in and rescue them from themselves, but we have to be patient and let them come to the same conclusion we've reached. We do this through the use of well-designed questions which make it obvious they need us to help them. Thank you for joining the Sales Japan series. If you found the program useful, then please work on your karma and share this with your family, friends and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Immediately, apply what you've learned today. Go out there and survive. Use it and make some serious money. Bucks, dough, moolah, coin, dosh, lolly, readies, smackers, earners, and bread and honey. Remember, I'm in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon. Nippon.